Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to our April 2nd Outreach and Network Guild. It's great to see you all here. And I thought we could start with, um, actually, I'll start with a mini grounding uh, slash land centering acknowledgement exercise. I feel like I certainly need it right now. Um, so I invite you to close your eyes or find a soft gaze, whatever is comfortable for you. Notice the sensation of your body in the chair or whatever you're seated on. Notice your feet touching the ground. And in your mind's eye, start to imagine where your body is located geographically in the place where you currently are. You could start by seeing your body in the chair and then seeing your body in the chair in the room and then zooming out to seeing your body in the building where you are and then the building on the land. Just notice yourself and your existence in the context of all of these other beings and the environment where you live, the land, the waters, the animals, the trees, and the plants. And I invite you to take a moment to sense into the interconnection between you and everything else that you're seeing right now in your mind, as well as through the air that you inhale and exhale many times per minute. And if it's available to you, I invite you to invite some gratitude for the land where you are right now, for all the beings on the land, and for all of the people and relatives who have stewarded the land where you are through time immemorial. All of the intention and care and love and awareness that has been shared with the land where you live now and most likely is still being shared now, whether it's in indigenous communities or regenerative communities, any of the communities that you are a part of. And just taking a moment to remember that we are centering the land as much as we can in this project and in our lives as the source of all nourishment and everything that exists. Okay, so I invite you to count back together, three, two, one, find ourselves back in the circle together. We might look around the room a little bit, reorient with the visual space around you. And we can start with a check-in question to go around the circle. And the question is, what is emerging for you today or this week? What is emerging? And the circle as I see it is Pam, Roland, Linda, and then me. Over to you, Pam. Hmm. Yikes, I'm first. Um, what's emerging for me?
man, it requires even a little bit more stillness for me to really be able to um, say what that is at the moment. Um, I still have a lot of frayed edges uh, just from the momentum of the day. Um, okay, I guess one thing that's um, emerging for me is um, uh, the um, the power of community, uh, the strength that comes from working together and sharing uh, important moments together and um, just leaves me marveling at the individualist ethic that has dominated our lives up until recently um, because again and again and, and just mm -hmm. recently in particular I see how wonderful unexpected things happen when mm -hmm. people join together to um, you know create those conditions where it's possible for something to come to emerge so that's where I am and um, Roland you're next I think it's what's uh, the the power and importance of keeping things simple uh, uh, I I transplanted some strawberries and they are putting out leaves and just that simple joy and um, trying to bring my attention and keep my attention in that kind of space. Uh, over to Linda, I think. Yeah, I think what's, what's emerging for sure, at least this very moment, is I'm getting more clarity around a real problem I've been dealing with. Um, I have a condo that sits in a homeowners association setting and uh, it's, it's a mess there. And um, because I have a real estate background, I've been just, uh, I've been putting way too much time into trying to help the board and the property management company figure out what to do. And I'm getting clear now on what I have to do and that feels good. Last week I was confused, so the clarity is beginning to um, dawn on me, which is good because it's when something like that takes half your life over, you've got to do something so you can get on with your life. Ronnie, to you. I'm feeling a deepening curiosity about how to bring more joy into my life and how to reconnect to practices that brought me joy in the past. I've really been feeling the poly crisis everywhere all around me and eating away, eating away at me. And so I'm trying to find my, my agency to reclaim joy and, and generate that for myself and for everybody around me. So Thank you everyone for sharing and I will share my screen so that we can all see our agenda for today. Um, so at our last meeting, we can everyone see Asana first of all? Great, okay. And our last meeting, we um, generated a main goal for this meeting, which is to talk through our and identify our seasonal priorities for the Outreach and Network Guild. Um, so that is kind of a few agenda items nested into one, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, and then the other thing that I would like to talk about is what goes in the newsletter for this week, um, that I will be putting our biweekly newsletter together tomorrow to send out to everybody on our lists. So that is also something I would like to work on as a group. Um, and before we move into these two topics, are, are there any other items that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Um, over to you, Pam. I'm wondering if this is the space where perhaps an update on, I, I was wondering if the Lifeboat Academy ever did 
managed to connect with um, the co-op guy because there was a letter where there was a cross communi communication. I was just wondering if there was any update about that. Awesome. And I think Roland was next in the circle. I can't quite remember. Yep, it's me. Okay. Um, uh, uh, one question that I have, which I think we'll probably be talking about anyway, but I'll bring it up now, is stuff around the website, um, pathways for um, uh, uh, observations or additions or just the things having to do with the website. Um, uh, how is that? How are we going to deal with that kind of stuff? And also a question from the um, uh, Heartwork and Philosophy Guild for the Outreach Guild, uh, which is around, there's um, a couple of event type things um, that we've been talking about and starting to plan and what the relationship with the, or the crossover with the um, Outreach Guild is. That's it for me, so over to Linda. Um, I think I have more of a question. I don't know if it belongs in the agenda necessarily, but when we get to setting of priorities, because I'm the new kid on the block, I don't know how the Lifeboat Academy has promoted itself up till now. So I'm kind of curious what the history of that has been. That, that would really be helpful if we could maybe share a little bit about that. I'm really surprised there aren't more of us showing up on these guild meetings. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about the background to that and what the guild's um, past has been in terms of outreach or just the Lifeboat Academies past uh, experience about outreach. Back to you, Ronnie. Awesome. So I think it'd be nice to start with your question, Linda. Um, and I wrote every, everyone's contributions down just because that will help, again, with some more onboarding to bring us to where we are now, um, looking at seasonal priorities. Um, so currently we, for the last at least year and a half, so since before I got here, got to be part of this project, um, we have a newsletter that has been at various times, bi-weekly, once a month, and every week. Um, and that is distributed through MailChimp. And we have a list of a roughly, we have a, two lists with a combined maybe four or 500 contacts. Um, we have an Instagram page with, I don't remember how many followers, 200 and something followers. Roland, correct me if I misspoke on that. Um, we also have a Facebook page, the Lifeboat Academy that has been up since before it was the Lifeboat Academy, it used to be the High Grove Farm page. Um, we also have a Facebook group called Lifeboat Builders with about 50 or so people in it. And the Facebook group isn't very active at this moment. And we've had ongoing questions about how do we want to engage people in that space? What kinds of things do we want to post? Um, but typically in the past, we've posted about all our ongoing events and offerings in that group. Um, we also put where I was posting TikTok videos for a while, and we also have an account on Mastodon, which is a sort of alternative, um, non-mainstream social media platform. Um, I'm not, there's another word, decentralized. That's the word. So we're on every, and now we have the website as well. So we're on every major platform except for Twitter or X. Um, we pretty much, I think we are Twitter boycotters. Um, and um, so over time, we've had various 
social media campaigns. So if we were, you know, we had a while, we were looking for all different kinds of investors and we designed memes or different um, Instagram sized graphics for each type of investor. And all of those would go out on every platform, including email and every day we were posting a different graphic. Um, and in terms of current outreach, Roland posts uh, a photo with a quote which we call a meme every day on our social media platforms. Um, so we get some ongoing engagement from that. Um, but yeah, I want to pass over to Roland to see if there's anything he wants to add. Oh, that, that seems pretty uh, comprehensive to me. Uh, every once in a while, um, uh, there'll be maybe a post about um, something more um, personal, I suppose, uh, on some of the social media stuff. But uh, otherwise, it's all pretty, it's actually all pretty passive stuff. I'm really curious about, Linda, with your background, um, what your, what your take would be on on this stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because we, I think we've, we've been doing, we've, I think we've been doing a pretty good job, um, with as far as we can. Um, and, uh, are there things that we're missing that, um, that might help, uh, uh, get more activity going or, um, is it, is it a bit like the star system where, you know, you just keep trying until until something takes. So yeah, I think I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, over to uh, oh, uh, actually over to you, Linda. Oh yeah. Um, well, the question that unfolds for me from what you just said, Roland, is um, what are your asks if you're posting quotes every day and you've got my goodness, you have a email list on your MailChimp uh, of four to 500 people, that's, that's a lot. Where are they? I mean, what, you know, what, what are we asking them and how did they respond? And have, have you ever, you know, held larger events to, you know, kind of re recruit them into your guild structure? That's the question I, you know, that just comes, comes to me, <clears throat> your history of success, what, what's working and what's not working and um, so on to you, uh, Ronnie. I think we skipped Pam. So Pam, would you like right. to go and then I'll jump back in to restart the circle? Um, I guess I share many of the same questions. It does seem as though there has been uh, a number of people who've been drawn into the orbit and then there's been a, a fading away and what are the um, current activities beyond what's currently being sort of mentioned which has already been sort of described as, as somewhat passive at the moment and I guess I guess along with those other questions already raised is uh, who are you trying to reach who would you like to re reach at any rate? And how can those people be drawn into something that will encourage them to stay to find out more? Something along that line. Yeah, I think these are great questions. Um, I was going to go next because we went out of order and then it'll be back to the circle, which I put in the chat, which I can't see the chat right now. So I'm not exactly sure what it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think it was Pam, Roland, Linda. Okay. Um, 
So in the past, we did quite a lot of outreach, um, recruiting folks to our lifeboat circles and navigation sessions. We would send very regular invitations. Um, and basically what came up often and when we were trying to, you know, who's our target audience, quote unquote, we were talking about the climate alarmed and collapse aware. So we would use language like, um, are you worried about the climate crisis and want to do something, but you're not sure where to start and things like that. Like really trying to meet people in that place of I'm feeling anxiety. I'm feeling fear. Um, I want to do something. I feel frozen, not sure what to do. Um, but we did quite a lot of email and, and posts. And also um, we've done Facebook ads, like paid Facebook ads. And we've also posted in a lot of Facebook, I mean, over a dozen different Facebook groups over the months um, with our different offerings. So it's definitely not for lack of trying, um, trying to, to get people to attend. And the lifeboat circle conversation is, it's a very simple ask. It's, do you want to come and talk about what a lifeboat means to you? That's the invitation. It's not, there's no commitment. There's no fee. There's no anything. It's really just come talk to other collapse aware people about what a lifeboat means to you. Um, and, um, and we know we've also advertised, you know, sign up for office hours, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one meeting, come pitch your project to a member of the team, all different kinds of ways for people to connect with someone and get support. And um, we actually did have, um, last summer, we had quite a few people sign up for one-on-ones with Ben. And a lot of those people came from the Earth Regenerators community, actually. Um, so that was a way the Earth Regenerators online community already existed. And so by building relationships on that platform, people started to hear about us and, and contact us. Um, so that's a bit more background about, yeah, of hopefully answering those questions a bit. Um, and we've talked about, so at the last meeting, we talked about starting up the lifeboat circles again about once a month, which is a really great way for people to get a taste of what it's like to be in a group like this, what it's like to use circle process and start talking about lifeboat building in a really sort of slow, approachable way and yet a really meaningful way. So I wanted to weave that into the conversation too, because we talked about scheduling that. Um and I'm actually just going to, I'm going to shut up in a second, but I wanted to open our task for the seasonal priorities for the guild because all of these different elements, I feel like are are specifically named in the the list that Ben has generated. So, okay, I will pass to Pam. Um take up my lozenge. Um, I don't think I, yes, that was, a, that was a pretty sweet time with Earth Regenerators when there was that activity built up around them. Not quite sure what happened. Um, and so I find it curious that I'm sort of like the last person standing from that community. As far as I know, there may be other people who are engaged in different spaces that I'm, that I'm currently occupying. Um, and because I remain uh, curious and engaged, um, I, I'm frankly kind of wondering why other people aren't. Um, I, I, but I haven't asked people either. I haven't been engaged with other Earth Regenerators about this. Um, Roland? Uh, I, it occurs to me that this conversation is probably useful um, as uh, uh, as part of onboarding, um, uh, actually going through the actual things that we've done, like look at the text, uh, the texts that uh, that we've we've written. Um, 
I, I, you know, Linda, you, you said, what was our ask? Um, and uh, I always wonder if there's a magic formula that we just haven't quite figured out, you know, what have we asked? Uh, are we asking clearly? Are we being direct enough? Uh, are we being whatever enticing or whatever? So I'd be, I'd be, I, I wonder if the first step is including in the onboarding the examples of the types of things that we've been using to reach out. Um, I wonder with the memes that I'm that I'm posting, like graphically, is it right? Is it interesting enough? Uh, so things things like that. Um, uh, also, I will let you know that when I'm in guilds and I listen to people talk, when I hear when I hear what you should be doing or what are you doing, a little red flag goes up for me. Uh, uh, so I feel like we're we are we are currently in a guild together. So it's oh, what are we doing? Um, so that's that's a that's a little thing that I notice. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, what I have for now. So uh, over to Linda. Hmm. Well, I guess I am curious about what we're asking of people. Uh, for instance, I, when I started to get more engaged, I, I, I've been coming to the navigation sessions for a long time just because they're really fun and they're satisfying. It's almost like a form of, um, you know, therapy without it being thera therapeutic, you know, and so I've enjoyed that. Uh, but it hasn't engaged. It hasn't engaged me in anything that the the um, Lifeboat Academy is is actually trying to to do in the world. So the the, the reason I'm a little bit more engaged now is that um, I found the ask of coming to the uh, uh, I forget what what we called it, but uh, the where we did some planning uh, over a weekend. You know that was a real ask. Um, and so I decided to make the effort to do it because I wanted to see what the Lifeboat Academy was more about. And uh, I'm glad I did. And I guess where I am right now is not having been more involved. I'm just, uh, for me to be more involved, I, I guess I, I need to really um, learn more what's been tried, what's worked, what does seem to be working, what isn't working. You know, I, I'm happy to help with the marketing or the outreaching. Um, but I, you know, to, for me to feel more integrated, uh, I want to be able to really look at what's been going out to the public and maybe even talking with some people who have dropped away. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we need to do a survey. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things we could try. I don't know if you've tried any of these yet, but I can, you know, suggest some things that we could try to do to kind of see where we are in an organization. I, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's having the same problems. It's a, a OD organization in LA. The one in Orange County just died when I came back to live there. I couldn't believe there was no more OD organization. Uh, it was shocking because that's how I got my career start. So I got involved with the uh, OD in LA organization and they've got almost a thousand members they send mailings to and they get very little back <laughs> so it's it's a similar kind of problem and i don't know if it's because of um people's attention uh is just elsewhere right now i i don't know what it is but it does make me wonder so i'd love to brainstorm uh what we could do because this is something that does i would think appeal to exactly your target audience i wrote it down i love the way you you word it the uh, climate aware and the collapse or the climate climate and collapse aware yeah that's that is the community and i'm wondering what this um earth regenerators community does and why they've been very successful so you know we could study like an audience that has kind of been involved and then were involved but then drifted away so it would be uh, interesting you know, that's another thought. So uh, who who's next? I guess, uh, Ronnie, are you next? 
or Pam. I get, I'm, I'm sorry, I got confused. Yeah. Yeah, back to me. So, to me. yeah. Um, well, one thing that I encourage people to do that you can do on your own time anytime is just look at our social media pages. So and you, I don't think you need an account um, to look at our Instagram page, Lifeboat Academy, um, and then Lifeboat Academy on Facebook. I also forgot to mention our YouTube channel, which we have recordings from all our meetings, all the charrette recordings. We've got webinars. We've got how-tos on there. I think that's a really great resource for people yeah. um, for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the point about the Earth Regenerators community is really interesting. And Linda, to make a very long story short, the Earth Regenerators community has recently gone through um, a death and a, is going through a transformation and it no longer exists on Mighty Networks in the way that it did for a few years. So I think that might be one reason why, that is one reason why we haven't heard from some of those folks is I can no longer post on that platform about our sessions. Um, but I think something that's interesting and good to note about that community is um, all of those people were already, especially the people active in the community, are all engaged in regenerative projects already. They're already thinking about ways to work more efficiently and collaborate better and be more humane and build the culture we want to live in, you know, so that those are really our ideal people in a, in a sort of in a microcosm that, you know, we didn't have to even do, we didn't have to do any convincing because they were already there ready to go. Um, so I think that's one consideration is where can we find the people that we know are already, already active and ready. And this is, we've been trying, you know, that's why we were posting in these Facebook groups and things as we're, um, but one of the issues or one of the tensions, I think, is that there's so there are so many resources out there yeah. about every everything that we're talking about, about regenerative farming and community building and all of the Joanna Macy stuff. And there's all there's already so much online. And so what is our special, unique thing that we're offering while also acknowledging that none of us are special or unique <laughs> in terms of the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and I just want to say one more thing, which is that the navigation sessions are actually designed to support lifeboat builders to work through tensions in their regenerative projects. And that's not something that we typically say in the navigation sessions or at the beginning, you know, but ideally um, we have lifeboat builders who are, we're in relationship with them and the navigation sessions are an opportunity for them to come and talk about their tensions and come to their own, uh, so what, and, you know, for themselves with the support of the community and also bring, bring their people to the navigation sessions or host navigation sessions for their communities. So they're really meant to be a tool in the, the lifeboat network, the, the building of the network and the sustaining of the network. Um, I will pass on now to Pam. Hmm, how interesting, what a difference a pass makes. So with Earth Regenerators, and it's a new situation. I've not been hanging around much. But my understanding is um, the feeling I get when I'm on the um, on the site is um, they need help. <laughs> and uh, they're in the process of going through a renaming uh, exercise, I think at the end of this week, I just heard about that through one of the people that I communicate with on, you know, on email. So I, um, the Lifeboat Academy could still introduce themselves, excuse me, we can still introduce ourselves to or three generate, to the tra it's transition ER is what it's called, the transition space. 
And I have to admit that I don't feel like I am part of that anymore. But I haven't actually, it's been a very slow process of coming to feel that and admit it to myself because of course my involvement was very intense. Um, the, um, what the Lifeboat Academy has, like the reason I'm here and not in Earth Regenerators or the transition Earth Regenerators is because this place speaks to me as an Earth Regenerator, lowercase letters, because this is where the work is taking place. You guys are, are uh, bringing out the tools, the processes and the relational um, capabilities that are um, stalled from my experience with the transition ER space, partly because there are apparently, excuse me for going on a bit and just let me know if you don't want much information, but I think this conversation brings to mind that maybe there is, a when I heard about the name, renaming certain thing that's going on at the, on Friday, I was thinking that no, I won't go because I haven't been participating and I haven't been feeling an internal support. One of the reasons I haven't been feeling an internal support is because their processes have got bogged down in routine and in the, um, uh, the structural gridlock of the same people doing the same thing, expecting different results. This place is doing exactly the opposite. I mean, there's just been a great big um, breath of air blown into the Lifeboat Academy in my experience. And uh, what has happened here, and, and again, I, I was too slow to pick up on the significance of your charrettes of the charrettes um, and of my, of its relevance to me and my particular needs post ER tentative design school for regenerating earth, but even more importantly, the regenerate um, greater Victoria group here, where this I'm finding is informing me tremendously about the possibilities for us to build our lifeboat here and to build a lifeboat relationship. But that's get, that gets into a different territory. Um, anyway, the main, the main thing that was kind of uh, getting my attention was, from what I can tell, um, I don't see any reason why you, you can't access, we can't access, um, and excuse the lag in my, my language, which I guess indicates um, that I'm in a transition point of, am I, how, am, how in am I, and what can I what can I really offer and commit in terms of my time and energy? Wanting to be there more fully than I have been and not certain because of what is going on here and needing to find a way of making sure that my life is as integrated as possible so that it doesn't feel like I'm doing that, that I'm instead doing this, right? Okay, Earth transition or ER. If they expect to be relevant, I'm just thinking this place has all of the technologies, all of the, um, they've done so much work. Earth Regenerators doesn't have, or whatever the new thing is, doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. And maybe they just need to know that there's this potential gift right at their doorstep. Anyway, that's 
enough. Sorry for going on so long. Thanks, Pamela. Um, I don't have another word for it, but the the one thing that I I think that that um, the lifeboat uh, uh, group has a lot of um, amazing uh, talent and ability, and one of the and and we are still building that library of skills. And one that we don't have is I don't have a different word for it but kind of like a closer because we've identified that we could be really useful to groups like earth regenerators. And I think that we haven't found the way to say, Hey, we've got what you need, you know, because anyway, so, so we need, we need for lack of a better way of putting it, we need a closer, somebody who can, who can have that language or that, that way of, of being able to present ideas. Um, I also wanted to to talk about um, uh, you know, we used to have the relations guild because we uh, we saw that relationality was really key to um, working in a way that is, different from the current model. So that we're building networks, we're building relationships so that we are mutually um, uh, uh, helpful or mutual aid, I suppose. Uh, and, um, and that is a different way of thinking about things. You know, we still have a tendency of thinking about there's this organization and uh, and that organization, and um, is there? Uh, we've been exploring ways where it can be. Uh, I think it's uh, 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 aligned with Hellenic thinking. You know, where you've got disparate elements that are things in themselves, and yet they can't exist without each other. In the same way that a heart and a brain can't in exist independently, they need each other to be able to function within the whole organism of the body. Um, so, yeah. So, so, um, and I, yeah. Um, so I find the idea of working with other organizations really appealing, and it's something that I've. I've wanted, and it's also another way of being able to increase the network. And I, I went to, I, I was thinking about this whole relationality thing because I was thinking about, well, you know, we were talking about earth regenerators and membership in the Lifeboat Academy and, and um, uh, uh, so, so how can, what does it look like where both organizations exist independently and yet at the same time have um, relationships that support each other. So uh, so so creating links with different organizations such as, as Earth regenerators and with different people, individuals who are you know the climate and, and the the polycrisis aware, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are different ways in which we can get membership. But then it's always this closer thing. You know, this, this, how do you, how do you reach out? How do you get, how do you get um, the, uh, the energy? And the, I, 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 I do have a very, very hard stop at three. So I'll probably be logging off in the next couple of minutes. So if you, uh, so uh, if I suddenly disappear, I wish you all a wonderful couple of weeks or a few days until the next time I see you. So over to Linda. Great. <clears throat> I have a real hard stop to around 320. Um, well, when I listened to you, Pam, and I listened to you, Roland, uh, I wonder, or I question if perhaps our role vis-a-vis -vis an organization like the Earth Regenerators, and I'm sure there's many, many such out there, I know there are, uh, couldn't be one of almost a consultative role. Uh, if that's the case, then we need to be very clear 
about what that relationship looks looks like in terms of are we going to be asking for money is it totally free are we just here for you whenever we need to really spell out what does that mean um maybe that's the confusion maybe maybe that hasn't ever actually been spelled out i don't know you know, only you guys can tell me <laughs> and i will i i i now really see that i will do my own little research into things you have out there and um and i'll, I'll come back and i'll let you know what i see and um uh, so that we don't have to waste valuable time here but uh, it just seems like uh it seems as though i mean i know i've known ben now for over 10 years from ncdd i know he's a wonderful consultant and he's i i'm sure many people have helped him but you guys have put together a wonderful process and i've i've tried to do my own climate work uh, in a number of ways which i won't go into right now in all the depths but one of the things that has never worked for me personally have been uh the processes used they've led in fact to power grabs and to um manipulations that you know i'm not going to give of my free time and be in an organization like that so i've left them <laughs> but the one that was always great was this one so i'm here just to see what the heck you guys are doing but i am concerned that there aren't more people showing up so uh i want to at least hang around and and maybe that's something that i can help with back to you ronnie yeah, so I want to explain a bit about how we've set, how really how Ben has envisioned the network functioning in terms of like the flow, the flow of information and support and everything and how, how we've been trying to flesh out the network. So um, essentially, um, the Lifeboat Academy consists of um what we call nodes in the network. So a node is anybody who's working on a regenerative project or wants to be working on, you know, any kind of lifeboat um, who agrees that they will basically be part of the network. They will um, participate in ways that work for them, whether that's navigation sessions um, or mentoring. And so we have what we call lifeboat mentors, lifeboat mentoring. And the mentoring program is where Ben is a consultant and we're also trying to move away from the, this person holds all the knowledge and you need to come and talk to this person, right? The expert, non-expert dichotomy, um, but really framing anybody can be a mentor to somebody else. So mentors, mentor, and mentors also have mentors, if that makes sense. So you have mentors and you have mentees. Um, and anybody can be a lifeboat mentor. And we have a process for how that works, which is um, it's basically coming to navigation sessions and learning how to facilitate them um, and, and stepping into that role. And also it means that you're willing to, um, we also have what we've been calling switchboard operators, which to me, a lifeboat mentor also is a switchboard operator, but there are people who, are part of the lifeboat network who um, anybody can, anybody in their life who comes to them and says, I have a question about, um, you know, milling trees to build a house, or I have a question about making my water system better, or I have a question about sociocracy. They can say, well, I'm part of the lifeboat network and I know so-and-so who's also part of the network who knows a lot about that. Let me connect you to them. So really, it's a way of people being really leaning into relationships to share knowledge and resources and skills with one another. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's basically how we've envisioned, you know, so um, people from Earth Regenerators were coming to our navigation sessions um, and those are all different people who have a lot of knowledge and expertise about all different kinds of regenerative regenerative things. So those are those would be ideal people to actually become lifeboat mentors, become a node in the network, and host their own navigation sessions, um, and help connect other people as well into the network. Um, and that creates this space where we're all 
doing mutual aid with one another all the time, depending on what our needs are as they arise. Um, and the other thing I wanted to touch on in terms of the flow of energy and money is that there were no, um, what we've envisioned and what we've intended is for it to be a pay it forward gift economy. So if you come and you meet with me or Ben and you get some support for your lifeboat, um, you have the opportunity to pay it forward in whatever way you can. And we say that it's not just financially, but you can pay it forward by, who knows, offering offering something that you have that you can offer. Um, but what we've seen so far is we've received a few donations here and there from people who've come to sessions or had a one-on-one, -on -one, but overall the work, um, at least so far, is has not been lucrative um, in that sense. I think the farm itself is more set up to be an actual business. You know, it's going to be very important that there's money coming in for various things. Um, but in terms of the Lifeboat Network, we've set it up to be, yeah, it's all pay it forward however you can. Um, so I'm, an, you know, an official <laughs> Lifeboat mentor and I've been doing, I've been sharing my experience and skills with different communities I'm a part of. Um, but I'm also curious how I could bring more people into getting involved here, um, at the very least in navigation sessions, because I think they're really, really useful. Um, but yeah, I think that that was the piece that I wanted to speak to. And I also just wanted to say, I think this conversation's really helpful. I think this is really foundational to how we're going to be able to work together as a guild moving forward and really being strategic about our outreach. And even though there's not a ton of people here now, there are a lot more people involved in these guilds than there were a year ago. A year ago, it was just me, Ben, and Roland and April, and we were doing everything. So um, we're definitely moving in the right direction. It's just, it's an organic process. <laughs> So yeah, I will pass over to Pam. Matt, I really appreciate um, the commitment to the vision that you have had held, you know, over that period where it may have seemed like nothing was happening and yet there's something to hold uh, dear because it's um, quite possibly what is happening now. So it seems like it's slow and uh, that is not a bad thing. Um, but it, it creates uncertainty because we're used to things going quickly. And also we live in such urgent times. But anyway, the other thing I was thinking about, um, aside from Earth Regenerators, I don't feel I would be a good person to be an ambassador, let alone a closer, because I think I have a, a feeling that I may not have a very um, good reputation uh, um, with them now. I, I'm not certain how welcome I would be. I I feel a bit ambivalent myself because I um, um, didn't um, struggle to keep the entity going as it was. Um, and felt myself ready to move on. That being said, you know, I'm not entirely sure. I think that I will try to go to the naming ceremony and feel how that is. I think you guys have your own, yeah, excuse me, that language, it's it's still there. But, um, but you, Ronnie, and Ben and, and um, Roland, do have your own relationship with a number of people, I think, who are still semi-active in that space and would probably be very welcome, welcoming uh, if you were to show up. I don't know if you're still currently, how, how active Needy is with the, with the Lifeboat Academy, but or Trisha, um, or I, I don't know what's happening in, in, in that space, but I think you would be welcome, like really welcome because they need, like, 
considering that it is something that suits your um, your own um, vision, um, it's if you want to enter that, there's I think it seems to me like it would be answering um, a lot of needs that they probably have, especially and the and the navigation sessions are really good entry points. And really good ways of building relations, you know, rebuilding them. The other thing I'm wondering about is, uh, well, no, we'll leave the design school out of it. I think there are some tensions there that may be a little uh, something. I'm with a, another group, a small group in uh, my district, five of us. And we are just now finding ourselves at an interface with another group where the question was, are you a legal entity? But no, we're not, and we don't want to be. But we do have reached a point where it may be time for us to start considering how it is we're doing things so that as we engage other groups and other projects, we will have a stronger core to do that with. We'll have pro we don't have any processes in place. We don't even keep notes. Um, and so I'm we have a meeting later on, I think in a week, next week, next Monday. And may so I'm thinking now perhaps this would be a good time for me to suggest to them that we um, consider just having one trial, one test engagement with the Lifeboat Academy. And um, if we were to do that, I guess I would like to know what you would recommend um, would be the best way for this rather diverse and eclectic group of people to come in and, and uh, would it be one of the navigating the tensions? If so, is there a way, of how can I pitch that to them? Uh, not good language, but nevertheless, so that they would see the how, how this thing could really help benefit. Um, because um, more and more we have to engage on the ground and get our heads out of the obsession with carbon counts, yet that's still going to happen, but how do we work together so those tensions that exist between those different directions can keep the group cohesive and working well together? That's one thing that I have in mind. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so many things pop into my mind. Um, transition town groups. Have you guys been in touch with transition town groups? You know, that's that's a big question. I was quite involved with them at one point. Uh, I was a co-director of Sustainable Tucson. I mean, they they could use uh, this navigating tensions thing. But, the, you know, the, the big question I'm sitting with here is there's a lot of groups out there. You know, I've been a part of some and I know of others we're calling this a lifeboat academy. So academies have ongoing courses, events, you know, they, they reach out because of these offerings. So that could well be something that maybe we don't have it now, but if we're finding a way to bring people to us as an academy, that needs to be sort of packaged in a way to meet the needs of a lot of these organizations that are out there. There are, there's a, you know, I, I'd never heard of earth regenerators, but there's a lot of organizations out there. And um, you, you guys probably know of Richard Heinberg. He has been quite helpful in the transition town movement. And he wrote a book called Power. And when I got the climate dialogue group going uh, a few years back, he came in, gave us a little overview of his book. We got the field and graduate school involved. And one of his main one of his main um, points in the book is that we have created a world that has too much power on top, right? We all know that too much vertical um, 
vertical power. And so what we need now is, is uh, participatory or power that's been dis that's more distributed, more e equal. Until that happens, or is horizontal power, let's just call it horizontal power. To me, that's why I wanted to come over here and see what you guys were doing. And it seems like, you know, with um, Ben's orientation to organization development work, he's really put together some great processes. Most organizations out there that want to make a difference in this field, in the sustainability field, they're doing it in, in different ways, but they don't really have good processes in effect. So, you know, from my point of view, let's create an academy where the processes is what we're actually outreaching with. But we have to make that clear because otherwise we just become another group out there that's trying to do good work in terms of earth regeneration or whatever we want to call it. And I've got about another 10 minutes and I'm going to have to have to go bye bye. So I'll, over to you. Yeah, I mean, I think we've done a lot of outreach around the processes we've off offered. We offer. We've done a lot to talk about lifeboat circles. We've done a lot to promote the navigation session as a way for groups to work, individuals and groups to work through their tensions. Um, last summer, we were pretty heavily advertising about looking to work with um, organizations and small businesses to help them improve how they work together um, and just didn't didn't get a lot of bites. And I also, I think a big, the biggest tension we've had is that we were only four people trying to do all of these different things at once, including purchase a 47 acre farm in BC, which is, as you are well aware, no small feat. So we really need people besides just the four people who've been part of this project for the past 18 months to be part of the faculty for the academy and to start talking, to talk to people more about what we offer and how people can get involved because the mass marketing that we've been doing, we've, we've tried a lot of different messaging um, and and in this moment, I'm feeling like being relational is going to be the key. So people talking to the people they already know who have organizations, who have businesses, who want to start a lifeboat of some kind and saying, hey, I'm part of this academy and we have tools and this is here's what they are come to a navigation session. And I think the navigation sessions are are a really great first taste of how we work and how groups can work together to work through anything, really anything. And I'm saying this also to answer Pam's question about, you know, what's a good first connection or a good first taste. People can come to our bi-weekly navigation session, um, which the next one was going to be tomorrow, but I don't think is happening for a number of reasons, but the next one will be in two weeks. Anybody is invited to attend that. Um, and we can also schedule a, a private quote unquote navigation session with a group that Ben or I or April or some combination could facilitate. Um, and then if that group, any group, if they like the navigation session, somebody from that group can learn how to facilitate and then boom, that's part of their, that's part of their toolkit. So it's really an experiential um, process and we just need people to say, Hey, come to this thing. I think it could really help you. So I'm really trying to lean into the networks that we already have to bring people in. Um, I don't want all of our energy to go to refining our social media messaging because we've already done that a lot for one, for two, people are getting tired of social media and they're constantly bombarded with stuff. People's attention spans are shortening drastically, especially people my age who've been literally raised on social media. It's awful. Um, and so, yeah, what's what's the 20 that gets us 80 in all of this? And I think it really is, you know, leaning like leaning into the relationships we already have with people from ER and anyone else that we know who would who might be interested. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say for now over to Pam. 
Yeah, and I guess those would be something like a closing because you're going to have to leave soon, Linda, aren't you? Uh, would you like to go first, in fact? Well, yeah, I would. I, I think for me, I'm just going to say what I'd like to do. It's, it doesn't really impact you all, but I, I would like to take um, some time before we meet next to see what, from my point of view, you have on your social media and I, I'll look at, I'll take a better look at the, um, the website. I appreciate what you did, Pam, in terms of uh, going over it. And I, I think I still have your notes. Um, so I'll come a little bit more prepared next time. Um, and I would say, I mean, this is just off the cuff, but while I have enjoyed the navigation sessions a lot for me personally, I never ever once thought it was like your main outreach to the public. I just never did. I, I could never figure out why, like I was drawn to it as an individual, but I never, I never assumed it was because you were trying to give me a tool that I could use in some sense in the in this field. It just never occurred to me. So I'll, I just give you that as feedback. I love them. I mean, that's why I'm here. But I never assumed anything that th this was a tool that I might actually learn to use in some way. So maybe it needs to be tied to a larger, you know, sociocracy uh, set of tools. You know, this is one tool among many that we offer and that's related to sociocracy, which is a wonderful way of creating this horizontal relational um, um, way of being, you know, in the world. Um, because that's that's what's um, making a lot of organizations, I don't know about Earth Gen Regenerators, but that's what's making a lot of really good organizations out there fail because they're not paying attention to how their relationships are within their own organization. So, Anyways, that that's I'm going to be kind of on that, you know, trend the next two weeks, and I look forward to, uh, you know, talking more. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I've got for, and Linda, before you go, the two things that made Earth Regenerators wobble was lack of governance and uh, the breakdown in the relationality. So the actually the navigation tent of uh, navigating the tensions group was really helpful for us bridging through some really tricky moments but ultimately our lack of governance didn't ha we didn't have any structure any foundation and that um, that that ensured a fail for us yeah yeah that's that's where I think we could maybe we need to find a niche I mean there's a lot of groups out there like I put Academy so my, my real question is how, <clears throat> what makes us unique and then how do we message that and provide just enough of a, a glimpse of what it is we can do and provide so that people understand how to work with us. So whatever that's worth. And my last little compliment to that is, um, yes, it took me a while uh, to get a sense of the scope of the Lifeboat Academy and where things fit in. And I did get arrested at the navigating the tensions spot and slowly came to realize that this was, um, as Ben was saying, and, and everyone was coming to the conclusion that this is a bioregional learning center. This is a place where people can come to learn how to learn how to do all kinds of things. And with that now much higher in my mind, I feel a little more confident about how to present, you know, present the con context for um, an invitation. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love the language bioregional learning center. That's really good. Okay. I'm going to say bye-bye. It's good to see you all. Thank you, Linda. Good to see you. Take Linda. care. Take care. See you soon. So I feel like we, um, we've we circled around our seasonal priorities quite a bit, and we're doing some really important question asking and considerations around the ways that we have done things in the past and the ways that we could do things in the future. So I feel like this has been productive and people are 
um, you know, you and Linda have been doing your own inquiry and research into various things that we're, that we've been up to and how they could, how it can all connect. So I think, I think that this is um, really a generative, generative time for the Academy at large mm-hmm. and also for the Guild. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I'm not quite sure I th- what you were saying, I think pulls together something. But I'm, I don't know exactly what your seasonal, when you were saying the seasonal thing, I, I can't read that uh, clearly on that. But um, I feel I'm coming away with a better sense of how to present this to my very small group. One of the things that does throw me about Lifeboat Academy over some of the other things is that for me, it's local, you know, even if you are a ferry boat away, just know, well, no, you're not. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, golly, my mind is going to tear into pieces now. Yeah. <laughs> Forget that. Still feels local, though. I know. Which is interesting. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the seasonal priorities are, what do we want to be focusing on for the next three months? And we're already doing it. We're talking about how to be more effective in our messaging. What kinds of messages do we want to put out? Who do we want? Who are we trying to reach? Um, I think we're we're very much in the aim, act, reflect cycle. We're really doing a lot of reflection about, um, yeah, where we've been and where we are now, and then where does it make sense to move next? So, um. Yeah, and the only thing that for me kind of still feels like it's hanging is um, when are we going to resume lifeboat circles? And um, I'm actually going to just propose, I'm going to look at our calendar and propose a new monthly lifeboat circle. Um, And that is the meeting that people would be coming to to talk about their own vision of a lifeboat yeah i think that even if it wasn't regular try one yeah and see what energy is uh brought forward i would that would be a terrific entry point for um the oak bay climate force Mm -hmm. um i think you know i get enthusiastic i don't want to overextend myself yeah. But one of the things that I just want to reflect back to you, Ronnie, is just how um, how uh, you have really um, in, d- distilled and assimilated and embodied so much of the processes that are being talked about that your capacities. Um, were probably pretty strong right to begin with, but I just love the spaces that you're holding and how you are holding them with a, such a, a a gentle uh, attention and awareness. And um, uh, yeah, uh, and it feels good to be in the spaces with you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> That's what I want to be doing. So it feels good to receive that feedback. Yeah, yeah. I think that you are a natural, or at least um, I, you're naturally here anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and it's interesting. I've been kind of wanting to report back, and I wish everyone were still here, and I wish Ben were here, but this is why we record things. Uh, um I, um, I've been organizing with my local Jewish voice for peace chapter, and we just, we're having our charrette, basically, we just had the first, uh, session of our planning retreat last Saturday. And the next session is this Saturday. And, um, I brought in a lot of ideas because we were, we were having discussions about what's the structure of the chapter and 
Um, I also, um, so I brought in the, the guilds, the sociocracy and the guild structure, which is basically a spoke structure and talked about why it works well and all of these things. And it's looking like, and they had already, other people were also proposing that, but I was able to share anecdotes, you know, from working with the Lifeboat Academy. Um, and I also brought in, um, circle process for our, our conflict resolution process. So I designed a whole, um, with a lot of input from a, a pamphlet that ben, ben sent me about peace circles, but I, I designed our chapters process for, um, navigating harm and conflict using circle process. So, um, Fine. I feel like I've been in the chapter for a few months and waiting for my opportunities to be like, hi, I have some tools. Here are some things that could work. And now I'm, I was able to contribute that in a pretty major way. So That's that huge. feels, yeah. Yeah. It feels that, really, really good. That's really interesting to hear you say that because when you're talking about the mentoring and the mentoring, the mentors, um, and to be able to have your own life experience so obviously an expression of the success of that model speaks volumes and it's very attractive could i possibly have a, a you know um learn assimilate half as much to become more effective in what i do mm. because that's what it's all about is how can we best show up yeah wherever we are and i love that what you're just saying yeah and it's really i'm learning how much it re relationality is about the opportunities arising like we can't force things to happen we can't force change but also change is inevitable and eventually people, well, often people are prompted to say, why isn't this working? What could work better? You know, what do people think? And so I was like, this is my chance. <laughs> um, so it is, yeah, so much about finding those openings and, and offering things in a way that is, you know, when I was in the retreat with everybody, I was like, this is all proposal. I am learning. I'm actively learning all of this still. This is all, you know, meant for people to chew on and think about and give feedback. And also this is what I think might work, you know, the best. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Respect yeah. and um, um, yes, that, that uh, whole as an experiment, but yes, that respect for, people having a choice to accept or not, you know, not pushing. I love, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So oh, if yes. you, you want to talk to your group that you've been working with about a navigation session, mm -hmm. um, you could either invite them to our next one or we could do a, a separate one for them. Um, yeah, let us know what would feel good, what seems appropriate. Yeah, so I will test the waters. It's, again, it's one of those things where I don't want to them to feel that I'm imposing or that asking people to do one more thing and oh, it's Zoom, etc. So yeah. it's one of those delicate things. But I'll, I think it would be so helpful for us yeah. to um, spread out a little bit or yeah, deepen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. Awesome. Thank you too. And I'm going to um oh, I don't know how to stop the recording. That's fine. <laughs> I'll stop the screen share. Oh. Uh, and uh leave the room. You take awesome. care and have a good uh rest of your week. You too. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.